Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, my Instagram handle is bananas with nine S's. I'm not sure why that's my, my name, but uh, that, that's what it is. And it works out because my airplane's yellow and bananas are yellow. So it kind of makes sense. Why aviation? I don't know. I think um, this is going to sound really, really cheesy, but I don't think people that are in aviation, I don't think they choose aviation. I think aviation kind of chooses them. Uh, I think something happens when you're a little kid, you look up, you see airplanes and you think, you know, that's cool. I want to, I want to do that. So I think that's kind of how most people get into aviation is just randomly um, by looking at an airplane and thinking it's cool and wanting to get into it. I bought my airplane uh, on an overnight without my wife knowing uh, about three years ago. I bought it from a Southwest mechanic down at Mallard's Landing in Atlanta. I had a long Atlanta overnight and he picked me up. We went flying for a little bit, went to the log books and uh, told him I'd buy the airplane. So that was in August of 2018. 2018 or 2019, something like that. Uh, so I created a social media account um, just to share, uh, not only share aviation, but share a part of aviation that I think a lot of people kind of forget about, and that's old tail draggers. Um, I think a lot of people have a preference for faster, higher, more complex, uh, more technology, stuff like that. And I think what's great about tail draggers, especially the Cub, is there's no electronics, um, there's no radios, it's all just stick and rudder flying, there's no glass cockpit, uh, there's really nothing. So you're really just forced to fly the airplane. Uh, you know, left hand on the throttle, right hand on the stick, use it both your feet. Uh, all the time flying the airplane, so I think that's what I really, really like about about the Cub. And you try to show that because, a lot, like I said, a lot of people forget about it. And also, I like to show that an airplane like a Cub is incredibly affordable. I think I bought my airplane uh, for thirty-five thousand, um, relatively speaking. This cost me about thirty-five. If you were out to go out and buy a Cirrus airplane, that would probably cost about a, a million dollars or so, and it's not nearly as much fun. As, as this. And tail draggers make better pilots than Cirrus pilots who, you know, occasionally pull the chute. Uh, you know, if they have an altimeter that's not working, they pull the chute. So. <laughs> they want, yeah. They may. <laughs> uh, no, that's good. I like that. Keep that in there. Yeah, um, yeah, photography, I was self-taught. Uh, basically, just I bought books online, uh, spent a lot of time on, on YouTube and Google, just reading, learning about it. If I wanted a certain shot, I used to be really big into car photography, and I, I wanted to learn how to do a certain shot, I would just research it, and that transferred over to pictures with my kids, and more importantly, pictures with my airplane. So that's, that's how I got into that. I'm just kidding, my kids are obviously more important. But. And as far as uh, you know, photography and videography goes, it's you know you look at social media and everything's either a picture or a video. So if you want to stand out and you want to get your quote unquote message out, then you should try to put out a, a pretty good product, if you will. So um, I think learning photography and videography helps a lot with with standing out. Uh, and the more you stand out, the more people will see your airplane and hey, that's a really cool airplane. What is that? Or that's a tail dragger. Tell me about that. How can I learn how to do that? So it, it, it kind of helps in that regard too. Um, I think one of the really, really good things about social media, um, or actually the, I think the best thing about social media is the people that you meet. Um, we're all here this week because all of us literally met on social media. Um, and actually one of my good friends who's got a tail dragger uh, reached out to me on Instagram. I didn't know him and he realized that I flew out of the Flying W. And he sent me a message and he's like, hey, can I come, you know, one day and check out the airplane? I said, sure. Um, and that turned out into us not only becoming good friends, but I actually gave him his tail endorsement. Um, that's what makes him such a superb pilot is because he learned from me. Um, but again, you know, uh, you're here, uh, Stephanie, Ed, 
Eric with AOPA, um, Ethan, so we all met uh, via social media and we can come together and, and do this kind of thing, which I think is great. Um, you know, I kind of just want to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, a lot of people ask me if I make any money on social media, and you make a little bit, but I, I think if you talk to most people that are on social media, that's not really um, why, it should, shouldn't be why they do it. Uh, I see a lot of people on social media that have a huge following, and they kind of use it for self-promotion, which is totally fine. I mean, that's their thing, and if they have a million followers, obviously they're doing something right. But I think social media and what I want to do is just get people familiar with, with airplanes and, and flying that they're not really familiar with or didn't think that they could do. I think the best part about social media is when you get a message from someone and they're like, hey, you know, that looks awesome. You know, tell me about it. What kind of airplane is that? How much does it cost to get your tail endorsement? Or, hey, I haven't flown in 10 years and, you know, I saw your videos and I got back to the airport and I'm, I'm going flying again. So I think that's really cool. And if I could just keep doing that, I think that's important. Uh, a lot of people ask me if I'm going to upgrade my airplane. Uh, I'm not. It's a 65 horsepower airplane. I would probably like an 85 horsepower, but for the type of flying I do, 65 is fine. Um, so maybe if they put a parachute on it, it would be the ideal airplane. But we'll just see. My favorite, my favorite thing about a Cub is it's it's a really simple airplane to fly. It doesn't go very fast. You can do everything at, at 65 miles an hour. Um, it's a very high drag airplane, so you can slow it down really quickly. You can slip over trees or power lines, which I do a lot. Uh, it doesn't have flaps, so that helps, helps get you down. Um, it's just a really, really fun airplane to fly. Uh, it's a very, as far as tail draggers go, it's not as tricky as the Lusco, which I have a little bit of time in. Uh, the 170 looks a little tricky. Uh, I think most tail draggers are really, really tricky, so I like the Cub because it's, it's probably the most forgiving of, of all of them and it's, it's just really easy to fly. I am not the only person who has flown the Cub. Um, I actually let uh, Kelly, Kelly fly today. She uh, is 19, she has a Bonanza, and she actually teaches full time in the Cub. And I told her she wanted to go out and fly the Cub, she could, and I thought it would be funny because she wouldn't be able to land as nice as me. And she actually embarrassed me because she did a much, much better job uh, of flying the airplane than I did, but that's okay. Um, like I said, it's because the Cub's easy to fly, not because she's a better pilot, so it is that. No, that was a that was a joke. You think that was a joke, okay? They know people watching will know that was a joke. Yeah, it's a, she that I mean <laughs> and, uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. This way people uh, I think one of my favorite experiences um, was flying the cub into Aeroflex Andover. When I first started um, flight instructing out of Caldwell, uh, we would go to Aeroflex Andover a lot, and there's a, a really well-known tail dragger school there called uh, Andover Flight. It was run by Damien, and I always thought it'd be really cool to one day uh, not only own a cub, but to fly it in here and just kind of hang out. So I remember the first time I took my cub in there, it was really cool because it was like, you know, a childhood dream in the sense that, you know, I kind of had visioned this for a really long time. And uh, after a couple of years, it came true, and I was able to bring the Cub there actually quite frequently. So that's, uh, that's been pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's important um, for the younger generation to, to get involved in general aviation because I think, I think, unfortunately, I think the future of airplanes is probably single pilot if not pilot lift so um, I think it's important that they realize that you can just get an airplane to go fly an airplane just for the fun of it as a hobby and not necessarily just have to do it as a profession uh, and it's tricky because I ask my girls to go fly with me a lot but if they have something else going on I don't want to push them 
I kind of want to introduce aviation to them and have them come and kind of let them either, you know, grasp onto it and want to do it or just, you know, let, let it be something that they do with dad. Uh, either way is fine. But I just want to make sure that I expose it to them so that it does become an opportunity for them. And whether or not they follow through with it and get the licenses, it's completely up to them and I'll support them either way.